All right, so we have the cylinder head here. I'm gonna take it apart and kind of show you how to take it apart. It's pretty easy. Well, the B-Series has these tubes running down here that the rockers are running on. Uh, I like to take those out and the lost motion assembly before we send the head out to have work. Some shops will actually just work around it. They'll do all their machining and get in here and then clean it afterwards. Our machinist doesn't, but a lot of shops do. So at the very least, take these out. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's actually pretty simple. All right, so pretty straightforward. There is three plugs. There is two on the intake side at one end, and then there is one on the exhaust side. What I would do is take all three of them out. It's pretty easy to get them out here. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. So if I'm block, blocking the camera here, I apologize. Each one of them has a washer on there, a ceiling washer. Make sure that as you take them all out, you see that the washer is there. So first thing you have to do is pull these out. This is the oil control office. This little bolt will screw in here. I believe it's a four millimeter. Put that in there. Now pay attention to which way these come out. I do these all the time so I know. But the one that protrudes up higher that is your exhaust. So just pay attention. And as I always say, take pictures before you take it apart, label everything, put it in bags, and that way you'll know exactly what piece goes where. Because of course, if this isn't something you do all the time, you take it apart, a few weeks later you put it back together, it's gonna look different. Now there is a bolt that you can screw in here to get these pins out, but if everything is in good shape, just use a screwdriver, put it in here, rocket and just lightly push those bars out. Now here is the trick. You're going to pull this out and each set of rockers is going to sit in its place. Now you want to keep these matching together. So you want to keep this set together, this set together. It's going to be completely readjusted valve wise so it's not like you're worried about setting the valves again. Just if these have been running together on that bar it's best just to keep it in the same position but these will pull out like so and you're gonna take each set and make sure the VTEC pins are staying in here this one doesn't come out this one will float don't drop it on the floor make sure everything is together this one won't come out so you're gonna put these together in sets. We have had cars come in here that this is stuck. Once had a car that the VTEC wouldn't work and we checked and tested everything and we found out this was stuck. This first one I've ever seen. So pay attention to that. Then what I do is I put all these back on the bar in the same order that they came out and then we put these in bags to keep this all clean. And again, make sure that you're not going to drop that pin out of that center rocker. I don't know if you can buy just that pin from Honda. If not, you're going to be trying to find used parts to put it back together. So I'm going to do the same with the exhaust side, exact same procedure. So we're in pieces now. Now we have the springs and retainers and keepers to take out. These are the Alpha springs and retainers. Great setup. I'm going to go ahead and look it over, look for wear, look for any damage. Now there's a million ways you can take these apart. I want to go ahead and show you one of the easiest. Okay, so this is the way we're going to take this apart. I don't have a, an actual head assembly for this to slide in. I have a hydraulic. And I don't like doing the tube and the socket wrench where you just hammer it like this and you shock it, you make the keepers pop off and sometimes you find them, sometimes you don't. There's also a good chance of when you hit it, you could hit the side of the valve and either damage the valve or even bend the valve. So this is a system that 
everybody sells something similar that allows you to press down. You wanna put a rag under the combustion chamber so this is pushing on the valve. So as you push this down, the valve isn't going down with it. All right, so because this head is gonna move around, it's best to have two of you. So George is gonna do the compressing where we pull this down and then we're gonna use this to grab the keepers. Okay, so what I'd also recommend you do is do one at a time and always verify you have two. If you try and do too many at a time, it's very easy to end up losing these, but each one of these has two. And then of course, you have the retainer. Is your tin looking good, Chief? Yeah. These are the titanium skunk, but what you wanna do is look for any kind of bending or wear under here where the spring is actually running on here over time they will wear through your retainers so it isn't something that's a hundred thousand mile retainer i would check with the manufacturer but they do have a lifespan and then of course the spring but keep all this separate often the intake and the exhaust are different so if you're going to do this put everything in an intake bag everything else and an exhaust bag okay so all the springs and retainers are out we just have our valves, so we'll take this apparatus off, we'll flip it over, and what we will do is we will pull the valve out a little, and then we'll check for a guide wear. So to check your guide, you're gonna actually push the valve out and feel this side load here. This is how loose the valve is in the guide. Now again, I usually do this by feel first to see if there's anything that feels too loose, but you want to back it up with a measurement. In the Honda manual, they give you a specification. You're going to put a dial bore gauge here, which is basically something that measures movement by pushing in a probe, which would sit here. And you go right from one side to the other like this and check, see how much it moves. If it's got too much wear, it will actually damage the seat rather than the valve closing in the exact same spot the valve will kind of do this and it'll damage the seat and oval the seat and wall of the seat and it's going to have bad compression and of course it's eventually it's going to have uh, a failure so these actually feel good let's check the intakes here too and again you're just going to push them out just past the seal you'll feel the seal if it's in good shape should be holding the valve it should just fall out but you're looking for where. And again, if you do regular oil changes, we find that these don't have any wear at all, so to speak of. It's the, the guy that goes 10,000 mile on the changes because he's trying to save money or save uh, pollution or whatever he's saving. He's the one that's gonna be replacing parts like this. These all seem to be in good shape, so we'll take them out and take a look at the seats see how they look decided not to reuse these valves because it is going to be a turbo application so we are going with the fiero fiero we are going with the ferrera stainless 6000 series we're going to go with a dished valve and again never know where the end may be i'm only looking for 300 325 but down the road if somebody else gets this and wants to turn it up you want to know that the valves are in it and not needing to be replaced just to turn it up another 100 horsepower it's best to put the parts in right off the get-go so the seats are actually in pretty good shape there's no real damage in there uh, of course that's the exhaust side that is pitted the intake side here is actually in really good shape there's no problem with those seats. Of course, when the new valves go in, the valves will be cut and the seats will be cut to match. But none of those look like they need to be replaced. Okay, so I don't know if you ever saw this uh, copy of Turbo Magazine. That was my yellow Integra on the front. Well, this car kind of started out as a basic build. Uh, quick backstory on this. I had a Mitsubishi Evo at the time. I just built the Evo. And to be honest, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it from the second I picked it up and went through the gearbox. I immediately just, I don't know, didn't like it. 
I built the car and did some horsepower improvements just to try and get into it and I like it. So long story, I sold the Evo and I got this Type R and I bought it with a cracked sleeve. It was a, a supercharged car that had just broke and I bought it and of course sent the block out. I had the block sleeved and I think it was like six or seven weeks to get the block sleeved. So while the block's out getting sleeved, I ordered pistons and rods and head bolts and such, new time belt, and decided to do a little bit of work on the head. Took it to a flow bench, a, a shop not too far away I was friends with. He said, come use the flow bench, learn about port in, hug the head out, do whatever you want to do. There it is. Long story, I hugged the head out where I thought it looked great. Airflow didn't improve at all. Hugged it out a little bit more, airflow went down. He gave me some tips and spent about 30 hours porting the head and learned a lot and increased the airflow a lot. So, of course the block is still out of sleeve in. The longer it took, the more I start looking at things. Well, let's take the gearbox apart, send it out, have the gears cryo treated, you know, have a quaff diff put in there. And uh, then I started doing all kinds of little things like I built a full intake manifold, a sheet metal intake manifold, and flow tested it, balanced it, got the airflow to maximize. Uh, the rockers in the head, took the rockers apart, lightened the rockers, shaved them, cryo treated them, did all kinds of crazy stuff. That's what the engine looked like. So I started out just wanting to put sleeves in the motor and make 300 horsepower and it got way out of hand. Ended up on the dyno at over 500. Then it was to a point where, hey, we're making 500. Let's build a little bit bigger exhaust and a little bit bigger charge tubes and put bigger injectors in, go back, crank it up even further. 647. Maxing it out. Why everything turned up. Alternator powering the fuel pump, so we're at 14 volts on the fuel pump. Anyway, I don't plan to do that again. It was a great car. The motor is still alive, by the way. The motor is in another car. It still runs, but that's not my intention. It was wheel spin city. The only gear you could use was fifth. It would go through the traps at 138, sometimes in your lane, sometimes in the other lane, because the car was all crazy. That's not the plan. Plan is is to use the B series, make three three fifty, and again I'm not trying to tease it. Hey, guess what? We made seven hundred. My past experience with Integra's three three fifty is very well balanced with a turbo that comes on pretty fast. It's very controllable. You don't need big giant wheels and tires to make it hook. It's just a fun car and it's exciting. And of course, you run it on ninety three. You don't worry about breaking it. So the block is on its way to CSS, that cylinder support system. Check their, check their website, it's cylinder support system. They have a, I think they do almost everything now. If they don't have it, contact them, they'll probably be able to do it because they're machinists that can do anything. So I'll show the pictures of that when it comes back. I'll show you every angle of it so you can decide if it's something good for you. Uh, they guarantee them up to 700 horsepower and there is a handful of guys making a thousand so. What's better than that? OEM sleeves, no worry about sinking, no worry about shifting, and of course support the sleeve so we can put a bit more boost in there. It's perfect. Okay, so this is a proven box we have used to ship blocks back and forth. This size is 18 by 18 by 15. It's perfect for a B-series block. What I would recommend is cut yourself some plywood pretty close to the shape of the box so that way when it goes in there it supports the bottom and the top so the block isn't going to punch its way out. Then you can actually pack it with bubble wrap and keep that block secure so it doesn't bounce around. I'm going to go ahead and put the block in. I'll show you what. So the trick is you want the block to fit in here as tight as possible. You don't want it to bounce around. We have the wood on the bottom. I did a couple of layers of corrugated cardboard then some paper. Then I put a plastic sheet all the way around it. I did degrease the block but just in case there's a little bit of oil spill, it'll catch in the plastic or the paper will absorb it. So the pistons we are sending with the block, they're gonna bore it to our pistons. We're doing CPs and these are 81 and a half millimeter. They are right at about nine, six to one compression the way everything's set up. So perfect, super boost friendly. I like anywhere between nine and a half and 10. By the time the block is decked, the head is decked, might be closer than 9.8, so perfect. Nice thing is, they come boxed and packaged well. So this, you can send, if you do the size block, is these will fit right here. Not only does it act like packing, it fits perfect, the pistons will travel well. What I would do is between the block and the box, 
is add a little bit more cardboard. Try and use this corrugated style, the stuff that's thick, it's got the air gaps in here. Break it to the size of your package and put it between everything. So as it gets bounced around and dropped on multiple angles, it's got a little bit more cushion. Thief up all the sides with the cardboard and then use bubble wrap to tighten it where it needs to be. That way, this isn't gonna move and it's not gonna have sharp edges pushing against the block. Then what I would do is to put a little bit more protection on the cylinders, just to make sure nothing can hit those. I'm gonna put some cardboard, then some more bubble wrap, and then see if you can get your top wooden piece Left. So you see, once this is put together, everything is tight. The more you push it together and wrap it, the tighter it's going to be. One of the more important things to say is don't put peanuts in here. Use bubble wrap. Try and use cardboard within bubble wrap and more cardboard. If you do the peanuts, they tend to shift. The block finds its way out the block. Uh, the block could find its way out the box, get damaged. Of course, peanuts are just a mess. Uh, when you send it, those guys don't want to be picking up peanuts. They don't want to be calling you and saying your block got damaged. They want to take your block, do the work, send it back, make you happy, and get on to the next guy. Next thing is put your information in the box. Put a big piece of paper, put the block, put who it's from and the service that you want doing, your telephone number, email address, return shipping, as much information as you can put in there. They can contact you and say, Hey, we got your block, it's done, this is how much you owe us. Is this the shipping address? Goes out the door. All right, so CNC works. It might be in the computer. So sizes is 15, sorry, 18 by 18 by 15. And then weight 60 pounds. This is gonna suck. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So more parts are coming in for Project Integra. We're doing Ferrer valve train. Those guys. This is pretty much the best stuff you can buy. This is the full valve train. We have the keepers, the seats, the retainers, and the springs. This uh, again, we're not shooting for massive horsepower, but it's the old Joel saying, if we do it now, we don't have to do it twice. That's why we're doing the CSS block, the forged pistons and rods, and the valve train. That way, down the road, if I decide to turn up the boost or we sell the car and the next person wants to put a larger turbo and wants to make 500, 600, we don't have to worry about saying, okay, now you gotta take your engine apart and upgrade it just a little bit more. So we're doing Ferrer stainless valves, intake and exhaust, doing standard size, doing dished valves, and these are the 6000 series. Which is the ones, Fier, Fiera, Ferrera, Ferrera. These are the ones that Ferrera recommend for a boost. This is, what is this? That's the exhaust valves. There is the intake valves. So the head is all stripped down. It's somewhat cleaned. It's gonna go to the machine shop, checked, cleaned, surfaced. The seats are gonna be cut. The valves will be cut, assembled, check the seat pressures, and the head's ready to go.